Hello, I'm Dr. Ian Coxon from the Experience Based Design Centre at the University of Southern Denmark. Today we want to be presenting the second of three videos that we have for our e-learning program. Uh, the first one deals with experience and how we understand that. The second one, today's topic will be the taxonomy of experience, the structure of experience. And the third one deals with analysis of experience or qualitative data called the seeing process. So today we're focusing on the taxonomy of experience. Now, it has a little history. Uh, it didn't just pop out of nowhere. It didn't come from nowhere. It didn't come out of a book. It was empirically de derived through a process or, or a process of, of research that I did some years ago. I was studying the use of particular strange vehicles, three-wheel vehicles, and some people had adopted them and others hadn't. But some people had, had thoroughly enjoyed these new kinds of vehicles. And so they were doing something different and I wanted to find out what that was about. I wanted to understand the experience of using these vehicles. And that's not the easiest thing to do because not many people could tell me how to do that. So I decided to try to understand their experience. But the problem was we didn't have a way of doing that. So I gathered lots of information, I interviewed people, I did contextual studies and so forth, and I compiled a massive amount of material which I had to come back and start to analyse. I turned it all into text and I did a normal kinds of uh, thematic analysis and what I produced uh, didn't make a lot of sense to me. I had over 200 different themes and I thought I can't make sense of this. So I started working with a mixed methods specialist, uh, Pat Baisley, and we worked with this period with, for quite a period of time and we developed some themes, and so we were able to coalesce some of the sub-themes into themes, but then when we ramped it up into the meta-themes, it became a little bit more interesting. What arose and what came out of that data was the meta-themes of senses, effect, cognition, and context. So all of the material that I'd gathered over all this time and analysed and so forth seemed to come together and coalesce into these meta-themes which seemed to be fairly abstract, but also very common sense. I mean, we've all heard of senses, we've all heard of effect or emotions, we've all heard of, we know of cognition and we know of context. So gelling into, or, or gelling into that sort of, uh, that, that kind of meta themes was not terribly extraordinary. However, when you start to think about experience and how you might understand it, this starts to become a basic framework for all experiences. Any experience can be understood in these terms. I mean, yes, it's abstract. But we can start to understand it in these abstract terms, but also in some of the more detailed or finite terms that fit in underneath the, these main themes of senses, effect, cognition and context. So I'd like to go through each of these main themes in more detail as we go through here. I'll explain a little bit more about how we might look at senses, effect, cognition and context in a slightly more detailed manner, knowing that it's only a structure for understanding this experience. It doesn't help us to understand it itself. It simply helps us to go, guides us in our gathering of information, our processing of information, or how we might begin to understand the experience. It is simply a framework or a checklist or a structure for understanding experience, not a lot more than that, but it's still a powerful and useful tool. So I'd like to take you now onto the whiteboard where we'll go through each of these points in a little more detail. So I've talked about senses, affect, cognition and context. You're probably bored with that already perhaps, but let's go into it a little bit more detail and maybe you'll find it more interesting. So we start with this taxonomy of an experience. We're trying to understand an experience, a particular experiential event that I'm experiencing or somebody else's experience. So we're trying to understand its deeper layers. It will always have senses. Now we understand the senses in terms of sight, sound, touch, smell and taste. I mean, we all have them and we all have them in different degrees and we all appreciate them in different kinds of ways. Some people like the sight more than they favour more sight than sound and so forth. But within each person we all have some kind of balance of these. Um, we can also overlay another layer on top of those, the quality layers of aesthetics and ergonomics. And from a design and engineering point of view these are very, very important. Because not only do these things exist as physiological responses to an outside stimuli, but they also have this aesthetic and ergonomic quality that only human beings can really understand. So the aesthetics of, let's say, a barbecue smell, or the smell of a barbecue. Let's say the aesthetics of the smell of a barbecue are a rich aroma, some smoke smells, perhaps some alcohol smells, 
there are the experience of a barbecue will contain rich aromatic con content. Now, but but not for everybody. If you're a vegan, for instance, you're probably going to be revolted by that. And this is when we come into ergonomics. So perhaps this smell will trigger a physiological response that is very unpleasant. So the smell can be quite unpleasant and uncomfortable. Whereas others, in, er in terms of ergonomics, it might be a positive response, a physiological response, and cause us to salivate. It might also cause us to have some feelings of, uh, of joy and, 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 and enjoyment, camaraderie and commun communality. So these things, these aspects of overlaying qualities of aesthetics and ergonomics on senses can also then start to trigger an effective response. So there's a connection. These things all take place simultaneously. They are not discrete, discrete elements, although we're starting to talk about them in such ways. Affect is about emotions. Emotions are very different than to uh, moods and feelings. That moods and feelings tend to be longer term, more uh, durable uh, psychological states. Emotions are more short term, they're triggered by events and situations, reactions to events and situations, and so more closely aligned with having an experience. So we talk in, in psychological terms mostly in terms of uh, emotions being positive or negative. Now we can give a, a valencing uh, a factor of minus seven to minus, sorry, minus seven to minus one in terms of being negative. We could say that there are neutral emotions, that we're bored or we're not involved and so forth. We could say we have positive emotions that go from one to seven. So we can be positively or negatively involved or emo emotionally affected by the experience that we're having. We can understand these positive and negatives and valencing and the and numbersing system in terms of salience or its relevance to the experience or valence, its strength in relation to the experience. These are more psychological terms but they're also ways in which we can start to overlay layers of, uh, of, of understanding in terms of the, the effect of emotions. So emotions are a very complicated area and we can say in any given experience there will be a whole range of emotions, positive and negative. There's not usually, uh, some people will tell you there's three or four, but I found in my research, for instance, we're talking about 40 or 50 different identifiable kinds of emotions in a particular event. So it's a very complex area, and so we need things like salience and valence to understand it. But I won't go too much further into that, but other than to say that when we have an experience, there are senses, those are interacting and causing us to have effective responses. Our cognition is another factor entirely. It's a very, very complex area and um, I don't pretend to understand all of the trappings of the mind or the, the workings of the mind and mi mind you, no one else does either. <laughs> Our minds are very, very complex and uh, convoluted but I've, I will offer you two ways in which it might, we might begin to understand the cognition aspects of inexperience. Cognition being uh, our, our, our first level of thinking in terms of inward thinking in terms of how do I think about myself in this position, in this experience, in this situation. I'm thinking about my thinking as a reflexive, of course, but my reflection could be just simply about what I'm doing here and now. Conation is normally out, outwardly directed. It is about doing. How am I, what am I going to do in the next few minutes? How am I going to produce this or do that? How am I going to act according to the experience that is directing me? So I'm thinking, and we know that, that there's no person alive that is experiencing anything that cannot be thinking. So we know there's thinking going on, but we don't necessarily know exactly what that is. We can't necessarily observe somebody thinking, but we know it's there. And that's the important thing. In an experience, we have the senses, we have the effect, we know there's thinking going on. Now all of this takes place in my mind, in my skull, in my head. It's all happening within me. But it's also, none of that can take place unless we have a context. So we have to understand how all of that takes place in the context. And the context has a very strong influence on the experience itself. As phenomenologists, we will consider the micro context in terms of ex existentials. That is the space, the time, the body and relationship to others. Space is the space that I'm in right now, in this room, in this building, uh, in this uh, office space in front of the light whiteboard. Time can refer to my age, my uh, position in the university, the, the time I've taken to do this, the time of day and many other aspects of temporality. 
body can relate to myself in this, uh, this space, how I'm standing, I'm relationship to the board, my relationship to the room, and my relationship to the space that I'm, I'm in. My relationship to others is very complicated and quite quirky right now because I'm talking to you in your virtual space and I'm standing here in this space with one cameraman. My relationship to the people in the office outside uh, pulling faces at me is another thing. But I have relationships in, what, in this experience that I'm having now, I have relationships to those people who are about me or inf influenced by my experience. So that's part of my encapsulating the experience in immediate sense of my experience. Outside of that, in a meta context, we have these other areas that are also affecting how I experience this space. Now I can't go into all of them because there's, there's a lot of them and it's huge. But we can talk about technology, the camera that we're using, the lights that we're using, the, uh, the technology of the whiteboard, the pen. All of these things are technologies that influence my experience of this space. At random I can pick the, uh, the corporate economic, for instance. There's, there's aspects of those that if we didn't have a budget we wouldn't be able to produce these things. And the environment of the university uh, promotes this kind of thing. So it enables me to have this experience. So without those aspects this experience wouldn't take place or it wouldn't be the kind of experience that I'm having, which is very pleasant. There are many, many others. This is, this is a large area and of course we will put this up so that you can read this or take uh, screen captures of this later. However, these are all important, but they're not all, of their, all that there is, and there are many others that you can look at. Um, others have done research and developed larger lists than these, but there tend to be more peripheral influences on the experience. The senses affecting cognition aspects are the primary. If you like, these are the secondary, and this is the tertiary. So as long as we realise that in any experience that we have, we have senses, we have effect, we have cognition happening in a context we have the framework for be to begin to understand the experience in a logical and sequential way. We can make sure that if we're looking at an experience, we want to study an experience and understand it, we don't miss anything. We have that checklist. So go, go out and I hope you really enjoy your experiences of research and do it well. Thank you.